Welcome back. This is the 2024 NFL season preview, according to Sports Chat with Nat. Okay? This is educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only. Listen, this is just, this is what we see. This is what we're thinking. How about that? And you put your comments down there, what you thinking. Now, if you haven't already followed us on Facebook, click off the video. Go follow us on Facebook and come back. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We need you to follow us on Facebook. So now, we're going to break it up like we did last year, AFC and NFC. We're going to start with the AFC. I know it's normally north, south, east, and west, but my steel is in the north, so I'm going to save them for last. So... <laughs> We're gonna go with we're gonna go with the East. We're gonna start with the Buffalo Bills. Since I caught a lot of flack about my comments about Josh Allen. Not just only you. We we yeah. both did. Yeah, we got we got some comments about Josh. We we didn't rank him high enough. But we're gonna keep it short and sweet. So what we're gonna say is the Buffalo Bills this year brought back Mitch Trubisky. Thank you. Y'all can have him. All right. He went back on a two-year deal for $5.25 million. Now, they signed Chase Claypool. He gone already. All right. Mar Marquise Valdez Scantley from Kansas City. He's got, they took him, picked him up. And Josh. Josh is coming into the season. Last season, he finished with 66.5% completion. And we know he led the NFL in interceptions. I mean, only behind Sam Howell, who was a rookie. So anyway, but the Buffalo Bills got rid of Stephon Diggs. They had some issues uh, behind the scenes. And uh, so we'll see what they do. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say. Right? Oh, they did get Curtis Samuel. Um, they offered him a three-year, $30 million deal. And, and and Marquise Valdez Scanty, a four year deal coming. Uh, he was four years in Green Bay, two years in Kansas City, and they gave him a one year deal for four point five, like he on the downside. All right. Now, oh, our boy is still there, but we haven't heard much about uh, your boy Demar. Mm -hmm. I didn't check the total roster to see if he'd made the fifty three man roster yet, but gotcha. Check and see. All right, moving on while she's checking that to Miami. Now, the Miami Dolphins went out and acquired uh, Odell Beckham Jr. on a one-year deal for 8.25. And uh, Jalen Waddle, they gave him a three-year extension. And they released that quarterback, Mike White. I don't blame them at all. Uh, Tua, he finished the season with 69.3 percentage uh, percent completion and number one in yards. Um, Miami did pretty good last year. They looked like they were going to do something. But then towards the end of the season, they started sliding off. I don't know what happened. Because um, I was picking them to do a little something, something. But they didn't do nothing. They scored, what, 60 points one time, and then they do nothing now. So oh, we'll we see what happens. We talking about the Dolphins? Yeah. Yeah, they got – I don't know what happened. It was like Tua was getting a lot of yards, but the team as a whole was not doing anything. What did you find out about the Bills? Demar got hurt during camp. So he's struggling with the – y'all know I love me some Demar Hamlin. Y'all see me with my shirt on during the videos and stuff. He got hurt during training camp, so he has a hamstring injury, and it's basically day-to-day. -day. Okay. So. All right. So – Moving on to the New England Patriots, who have a new head coach, Gerard Mayo. Ger Gerard Mayo. Now, if you'd have told me that he would have been the head coach, I would have never thought so. But in the house, he is the new head coach. Now, they got rid of Mac Jones and picked up Jacoby Brissett on a one-year deal, and they got Nathan uh, Rourke. Now, they picked up Antonio Gibson, wide receiver K.J. Osborne, and tight end Austin Hopper, Hooper, 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 Hooper. Now, um, Jacoby, I did not get his completion percentage from last year, but he's been bouncing around for a minute, Jacoby Brissett. Uh, he's pretty steady, uh, but he's been bouncing around for a while. 
So, but he's with the New England Patriots. This should be a rebuilding year for them. I don't look for them to do a whole lot of anything, but you never know. Um, now, Zappi is still there, I believe. I believe Zappi is still there. Uh, I don't see Jacoby Brissett's numbers anywhere in front of me, but moving um, on. Hold up. Yeah, I don't see his stats in, in that thing. The Jets, the New York Jets. I do have it for you. What you got? Okay. 200 into last year. It looks like his passing was 224 yards, 78.3 completion rating, um, three touchdowns, no interception, and his QBR was 158.1. And how many games did he play? Now, What's that one, it does not say. Say how many games he played. Yeah, I think he played just a couple of games. They yeah. give you your stats for the games you start, usually. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, they don't have how many games he played okay. last year. I okay. Can you in a second. So, moving on to the New York Jets. They have now Tyrod Taylor. Now, I've always liked Tyrod Taylor. Always. They gave him a two year deal, 18 million. They uh, wide receiver Mike Williams, 15 million. And they got two offensive tackles, Morgan Moses from the Ravens and Tyron Smith on a one-year deal. Now, Tyron had a 64.4% completion percentage last year, and Aaron Rodgers, as we all know, went, out, went down and out on the fourth play of the game. Now, what do we think Aaron's going to do this year? I have no idea. Hopefully not get hurt from um, – in after four snacks, so. Now, who do I think will win this division? I think the Bills will take it. I don't think the Dolphins, I, I just don't think the Dolphins will do it, but I think the Bills will win the, the, that division. Okay. I, now, do you want, huh? I was gonna what? Say, I, I, I think who do you I'll think? Go. Sorry, Bills fans. I, I think the I feel like I do like the Bills, but I think the Dolphins are gonna I think the Dolphins are gonna come back with it. I feel like the rivalry between them two is gonna get better. Like we just gonna have a more interesting one between them and stuff. Okay. And since Cheetah is over here trying to challenge Noah Laos to a okay. thing, I feel That's like fair. there's a lot of stuff going on with that. So I think that okay. they will, I think they're gonna do it. What, what, what letter are we going to? Are we going to the West? Let's go to the West. That's exactly what I pulled up. AFC West. Now, let's start with them Denver Broncos. Now, I've never been a Sean Payton fan. Uh, he's still there. They got rid of Russell, and thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do, but we thank you very much. Now, they picked up Zach Wilson. I don't know why in the world they picked him up. With a completion percentage of 60. Now, they got the rookie Bo Nix. Now, I like him. He about 30. He about one of the oldest rookies I think I've ever seen. Is he's, he really that old? No, look him up. I think he's pretty old. Now, they did do something. They got three defensive linemen. Um, uh, They got one of the main ones I realized and noticed was they got John Franklin Myers from the Jets. He's so. 24. The Broncos played some good games, and Russell did actually decent quarterback-wise last year. He finished with 3,000 yards, over 3,000 yards, averaging 204 yards a game at 66.4 completion. So if Russell wasn't the total problem of the team, um, but anyway, that's the Broncos. The Kansas City Chiefs, what can you say about Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs and Travis Kelsey Swift? Um, <laughs> they picked up, <laughs> they picked up oh, Carson dear. Wentz. I thought he was retired and at home like Joe Flacco. And they picked up Marquise Brown, who is related to Antonio Brown, but he is already injured. Uh, they picked him up on a one-year $11 million deal, but he's already injured. Um, and defensive lineman Chris Jones, wait for it. They paid a five-year contract, $158 million. Um, listen, he's, 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 uh, 
I was going to say priceless, but they put a price on it, $158 million. Now, Patrick's completion percentage is only 67.2, but that doesn't mean the Hill of Beans, really, when you get him in the game and he wants to win the game. He will win that game on one foot if he has to. So uh, moving on to the Las Vegas Raiders, Antonio Pierce in his first full year as head coach. Now they have Kevin O'Connell, whose completion percentage was 62.1, and they picked up Gardner Minshew, who was the backup for Anthony Richardson at the Colts. But now he's going to be the starter for the Raiders. Uh, listen, Minshew had some good games. The Colts were looking decent. And I think if Jonathan Taylor had to stay healthy because he led the NFL in yards last the year before, I think if he'd have been healthy, they would have been a little better. Uh, now, they did sign a defensive lineman, Christian Wilkins, to a four-year, $110 million contract. Now, Antonio Pierce had those Raiders at an energy level that was unbelievable. And they tied... Uh, what was it, the 49ers or somebody the other night? I think it was the 49ers, 24-24. Um, so, uh, listen, I would not be surprised if the Raiders uh, are, are competitive. Do I think they'll beat the Chiefs? Of course not. But I think they will be better than the Chargers uh, because Jim Harbaugh, now, they signed one of my former favorite players, Bud Dupree, to a two-year, $6 million deal. I had high hopes for Bud, but he got hurt and never came back strong. Now, they picked up J.K. Robbins, Dobbins from the Ravens on a one-year deal, and they picked up Easton Stick um, for one year. Uh, they re-signed him for a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. So now Justin Herbert got plantar fasciitis. He was in a walking boot. His completion percentage was 65.1. Now, Harbaugh, I don't know if it was a publicity stunt, but said he was going to hire Kaepernick. Show Kaepernick with a jersey and him standing side by side. And in less than 24 hours, that, that statement was retracted. I thought he was saying that he was going to be a, a, a coach. A coach, right. right. Yeah. Well, they 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 X that before the the ink got dry on the on the paper, they X that. So, but I've never really cared for him because he did get the punishment from the NCAA, which I thought was a joke. Because y'all should have punished him long before he left the NCAA. He ain't never coming back to the NCAA. So I thought that was a crock of crap that they let him do all of those things that they supposedly he violated. And they still allowed them to go to the, the game and win and all that, whatever. Anyway, I think the Chiefs will win that division, the AFC West. Do you agree? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I okay. mean, their division is like, I don't want to say it's not competitive, but it's kind of like the Chiefs have started to dominate over them. Now, We've already seen that the Chiefs are very, they're beatable. Yeah, they're beatable. They're, they're beatable in stuff that times that we'd be like, y'all lost in that game. Because the Broncos give the Chiefs a run for their money. Last year they did. But, let's but that was with Russell. Russell. That's why I said, Russell. but it was with Russell. So we want to say, because Bo Nix, he's, 20, he's 24. Okay, He's not that old. He ain't that old. Well, <laughs> I mean, come on. He just graduated from college. He can't be that far. But, yes, uh, yes, that was with Russell. So, I, I do agree that the, the Chiefs are going to, yeah, you know, they got a Chiefs kingdom is still going to end up there. Now, are they going to do a three-peat? Probably. I wouldn't put it past them. I, I really – who's going to beat them? Who's going to beat them? Who's going to beat them? Who's going to beat Patrick? You know, I would love to sit here and say the Steelers are going to beat the Patrick. I know. I was Patrick waiting for you to say what you were. But do I really? Like do I really believe that? Of course, in my heart, I want to say the Steelers can beat. But do I really believe that the Steelers can beat the Kansas City Chiefs and get to the Super Bowl? Realistically, 
My heart says yes, my mind says no. Now, every year I do in my mind say that the Steelers are going to the Super Bowl, but I'm not sure that's going to happen this time. But I'm just saying. Uh, Moving on to the AFC South. Now, the Texans. Listen, I didn't know this till today when I was doing my research. I didn't realize they had got Joe Mixon from the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah. And they got Stephon Diggs from the Bills. Yes, I do and know that one. They got Ben Skoronkic from the Rams, and they signed six cornerbacks. Six. six, six cornerbacks, and a and a kicker got the kicker got an extension. So that kicker was priceless for them. So uh, C.J. Straub was sixty three point nine completion percentage. Listen, they shocked everybody last year. They almost got to the championship. I just, they were looking good. And for him to be a rookie, I hope his sophomore slump doesn't kick in. But we shall see. I hope Stefan Diggs has a good attitude and is ready to prove that the problem was Josh Allen and not him. Um, I think they would have been. I think they would have a good mesh. I think it would I hope like so. A, I think a, so. A, I hope older so. Older brother, little brother thing for them. And I'm wondering, is he from Texas because his brother plays for Dallas? And is he was he trying to get closer to Texas? Was that the thing? Um, moving on, while she looks that up, the Colts they picked up my man Joe Flacco, the comeback kid. Now he replaced Minshew, who was the backup for Anthony Richardson. Now, although Joe Flacco's completion percentage read 60.3. I would take Joe Flacco in my quarterback room because his accuracy in the playoffs is undeniable. His ability to uh, gather the crew together and keep them focused. He's a good leader. Uh, He's a good communicator. And they got Anthony Richardson back, who was riddled with injuries last year. Hopefully, he will have a good, solid rookie year, which will almost be like his rookie sophomore year, which will almost be like his rookie year because he was so injured. Now, I will say this. They uh, defensive tackle DeForest Buckner, who was outstanding last year, made the Pro Bowl. They gave him a, a $46 million two-year extension, $46 million. And linebacker Zaire Franklin, three-year, $31.6 million. <clears throat> Now, the Jags, they picked up Mac Jones from the Patriots as a backup to Sunshine. Now, listen. He's a good-looking fella, but he was a sorry quarterback. I'm sorry. He was pitiful. And I know his stat reads 64.9, but I tell you what, I wouldn't want him on my in my quarterback room. Now, Sunshine <clears throat> got a five-year, $275 million contract extension, $200 million guaranteed. Wide receiver Gabe Davis, three-year extension. And uh, Josh Allen, that awesome defensive edge rusher, five-year, $150 million. So the Jags replenished that very strong team that they had. Um, they faded down the stretch. They were looking really good at one point. Uh, and then uh, we leave, finish off that division with the Titans. <clears throat> Who picked up? Mesa Rudolph, who had one of the highest quarterback completion percentage, 74.3. Most people have never forgiven Mesa Rudolph for the alleged calling using the N-word under the pile against the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Steelers only made the playoffs last year because of Mesa Rudolph, but uh, the buzz that I've heard is he was never forgiven. So he went on to be with the Titans. And they picked up running back from the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Pollard, and wide receiver from the Cincinnati Bengals, Tyler Boyd, and Calvin Ridley. 
Now, um, cornerback Legarius Sneed, four years, seventy-six million, um, from a trade with Kansas City. Now, who do I think will win that division? I think the Titans will do. I mean, Texans will do it again. I really think the Texans will do it again. So I see you nodding. You agree, Master T? I totally agree, and I'm so going for the Texans to win this. Yes. Um, because I just I like. CJ Stroud. But one thing that I'm confused that I I think their division could have been they would I think the Texans are kind of gonna run away with it. I think if the Colts would have kept Gardner Mishu, I think it would have been a little bit more competitive, yes. like what they like how it was at that well, like right before the wild card game. So but yes. AFC North. Now I saved the best for last. And she's already said that the toughest schedules was uh repeat those what the Steelers was in that list. The toughest the schedules. people who have the I looked up to see who had the hardest schedule this season and and it was just out of the whole NFL and it was actually the Browns they said was gonna have the most difficult schedule. But I also saw at times they said the Steelers. So it looks like it would be the Steelers and the Browns. And of course yes. they base it off of who, what the, who, what, what was, bro, like, their opponents and what their schedule, like, what their record was last year. So. Okay. So, that being said, we have the Browns in the north. Now, listen. They still got Deshaun Watson, who I never thought they should have picked up, but they still got him over there. He ain't doing a heck of a lot of nothing. And they went and picked up Jameis Winston on a one-year deal. And now they got Dorian Thompson Robinson, who was the rookie last year, and they also picked up Tyrod, I mean Tyler Huntley, who the Ravens got rid of, who I thought was going to be a good backup prospect. Now, I read as late as yesterday that they're thinking about cutting Tyler Huntley and keeping Dorian Thompson Robinson the rookie because Tyler been struggling. But Jameis Winston. I don't know if I want him in my locker room because he's a little on the immature side, although he has some age on him. But that game last season where he called the own play, he decided what they was going to do. I, I, him and Watson together, that's just like freaking frack to me. Uh, Watson, to me, has never taken accountability for what he did. Winston don't care what he do. Um, I think that's a bad combination. Um they did sign uh, Nick Chubb is, uh, and Naheem Hines entered training camp on the uh, pup uh, player unable to practice uh, thing. And they got Deontay Foreman, who was an outstanding running back from, he done bounced around a little bit. But the Browns have that going. They still got the same coach. Now the Ravens, they picked up Josh Johnson. Who, when I was calling games a couple of seasons ago, I recall him being in there for a backup, and he had a pretty good game. And they also have Emory Jones and Devin Larry, and they added King Henry. That scares me in the AFC North. They added Derrick Henry. Now, uh, their offensive line coach died today, 70-year-old yes. Joe the uh alexandrius uh he had been i uh, had surgery this summer and he had been struggling uh he had been struggling um so um he died that might affect them i don't know how that's going to affect them emotionally it can be devastating uh for players sometimes um but here we go uh moving right along the bingles Cool Joe Burrows and the Bengals. Now, Joe Burrows has been kind of riddled with some injuries here lately. And his completion percentage was 66.8. But Joe Burrows, a couple seasons ago, was unstoppable. Looked like the only man that could beat Patrick Mahomes. Now, they picked up offensive tackle Trent Brown from the Patriots uh, by way uh, so and defensive lineman DJ Reader. He went to the Lions. So they got some tr trouble in the camp over there because a couple of people was making some noise in the media about their money, and Tyler Boyd is gone. So I don't know how steady they're going to be, although Browning was a good backup for uh, Joe last year. 
Now, last but not least, Pittsburgh. Black and yellow, <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. Now, listen. We picked up Justin and Russell, and we cleaned out our quarterback room. Got rid of Pickett, who, oh, well, I'll save that for later when you get to the Eagles. But anyway. No, we already uh, talked about the Eagles. You talked about, oh, well, they remember, talked about. I, well, I saved my best for last. So, yes, oh. go ahead and talk about that. Okay, yeah, he might be getting cut because they say he ain't looking good. But anyway, pick it. So anyway, some people don't think Justin and Russell will be good. I beg to differ. I think they're going to be great. Uh, we picked up Patrick Queen from the Ravens and Van Jefferson. Uh, and we picked up Cordell Patterson from the Falcons, which was the best thing I saw in the game uh, yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Now, we had to get rid of my baby, Preston Harvey, uh, because he was not a good punter. And he was going to really cost them this year. So we picked up Cameron Johnston from the Texans. Now, who do I think will win the division? Of course, in my heart, I want to say the Steelers. And I think we can. But on paper. On paper. My paper wants to lean towards the Ravens, but my heart leans towards the Steelers. So I'm going to say. <laughs> Are you going to go with your heart or your mind? I'm going with. I'm going with my heart this year. Because I really think that if Russell looked like he looked on that first drive yesterday, and if they get the plays right, for Justin, so that when Justin comes in the game, you don't know exactly what he's going to do. I think it'll be genius. And the way Cordell Patterson ran yesterday, Najee might be in trouble for his job, but um, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. So I'm, that's where I'm going. What you say? Y'all have a heart. Y'all have a heart. I'm not going to lie. I, I enjoy watching the AFC North, too. Just like a NFC North is going to be interesting to watch this year, I, I enjoy watching the AFC North because they all have a lot of good competitive teams. And I'm I'm torn. I have a three-way one because, actually, I think all, all of, any of y'all could actually do it. I feel like yeah. the Steelers have a good shot at it. The Ravens, I mean, Lamar Jackson in himself, anybody who catches their own ball that they throw up, I'm all for. Well, plus he dropped 20 pounds because he says he wants to be more agile. And he's a bet. they say he's a better leader this year. So I'm a little nervous about them, but. <laughs> She's still going with the black and yellow. Then, I'm, I'm just... I mean, Joe Burrow, we didn't even see this full thing this last season because he got hurt in week 12. Joe Cool. With I, Ice Joe Cool now since he over there dyed his hair blonde. And the Browns, I mean, they made it to wild card last year. But also Joe Flacco was a part of that. So never mind. Yeah. So um, I'm going with purple. I'm going to go with the Ravens. Okay. I'm going I'm to choose the Ravens. 